pues ya, ya está aquí mm. Churches, les dimos aquí la, la bienvenida con Violent Delights de su nuevo álbum y pues bienvenidos, bienvenida, welcome uh, to La Bestia Radio, to Diversirama, such an honor. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. I was uh, at the Beast actually, the yeah, beast. 666, the number of the Beast right Let's here. <laughs> I, I was uh, just remembering that I saw, I was remembering about Corona Capital 2014, uh, that festival uh, where it was full of mud, first time you, you, you guys played in Mexico City. I remember trying to get to the front, but it was very no. difficult because <laughs> of the mud pools and, and the people, but... How uh, how do you feel that your relationship with your fans in Mexico have been like evolving since then? It's been like eight years, I think. Yeah, I mean, people have always been so kind to us when we come here and play. And it's been quite a long time since we got to come here. 2018, I think, was the last time. So yeah, yeah we're really excited to be able to be back. And uh, yeah, the festival we played on Friday was quite quite bonkers. People were very <laughs> singing along very loudly, which I appreciate. Uh, did you have fun on, on Friday? How was it? How was Emblema overall? It was great. Yeah, we, we never saw much of any, what, anybody else, but we came in, we ate some really nice tacos and we played the show. <laughs> the show was killer. Um, it, was, it was really a warm welcome back. Okay, we're going to talk about about the food in a moment, but <laughs> did you get to see anyone at the festival? I don't know, Backstreet Boys, Gwen Stefani, or no, no time? I There wish we'd no been time. on the same day as Gwen Stefani, that would have been really... Yeah. I've, never actually, I've never seen her live, mm. I don't think, so mm -hmm. that would have been really good. But um, yeah, we had to leave, uh, we had to leave, <laughs> so okay. we didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's such a shame. Mm. But um, yeah, it, it's a... Uh, Obligated subject, the food. Have you? What have you been eating in Mexico since you arrived? What have we not been eating? I feel like <laughs> just constantly yeah. eating and sleeping is all we've been doing. But um, yeah, where did we? I went to uh, Contramar, that fishy fish place. Went okay. there, um, and I guess you, you guys have been eating a lot of tacos. That sounds bad, but like <laughs> we have partaken of many tacos. We went to Pujol. Pujol. How do you pronounce? Pujol. I think that that way. Like that it was sounds good. Puyol, yeah. Uh, I ate some ants. Yeah. Smoky ants. Smoky ants. Oh, like uh, <laughs> insects, like. Uh, yeah. It was like ants that were creamed ants. Creamed on ants baby corn. on baby corn. <laughs> that sounds good. I don't know. It was. I tell you, it <laughs> was good. It was good though. Yeah. It was it, cool. It feels like a, it goes good with uh, mezcal. Yes. Like yeah. A cup of mezcal. Oh yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, bueno, le estoy preguntando que qué han comido. Más que nada, este, eh, pues comieron hormigas, gourmet, comieron eh, un poco de comida de mar. Uh, a little bit of translation for <laughs> anyone who doesn't speak English. But, um, and have you learned any new Spanish words, speaking of which? Um, <laughs> Martin knows some rude phrases, which I don't know if you're allowed to say on you're radio. Martin. But Oh, I'm allowed. It's yeah. The beast you want to hear? Yeah, you want to hear me say like? You want me to swear? Yeah, it's all your vocabulary. Uh, Doesn't matter. I'll, I know. Well, the other day I learned. Well, I knew Binchi Cabron, and then I learned Viva la Mexico Cabrones. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and I know. Well, I know. I've forgotten all the other ones. My fiance tries to teach me. She is Mexican American and. Oh. She knows lots of uh, rude phrases. Your fiance? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, she teaches me about Mexican music as well. Okay. So I'm done. Okay. You can't concentrate because the cat is doing really cute stuff. <laughs> I know. That's... She did a little meow. Oh. I heard that. Oh, yes. She needs a microphone. She's going to be hosting She's her own radio show yes. soon. That's on purpose, yeah. For, it's kind <laughs> of a test for the... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sorry, can't, I guess you can't see on radio, but it's, oh, she's just jumped on our tour manager's I, I, lap. That actually, is amazing. Yeah. Actually, we're streaming on Twitch too, so, so you can yeah. can see it. Yeah. Oh, get the cheeks, Chris, yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> As we were. Um, if, if, if you guys had a festival and you could like put a headliner, it could be her. Which would be your headliner? For her? Oh. I what? mean, cats, I feel like, hate l n loud noises and that's, crowds. That's true, <laughs> so that's true. Yeah. A music festival is like a feline nightmare. I'm not sure there'd be much of a gig. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, Radiohead. Okay. T 
That's my favourite band. You know, I never got to see Daft Punk when they were around, but I'd like to rewind time and make them the headliners. That's a good pick. You'd sell a lot of tickets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. It'd be good. Yeah. What, what about you, I don't Lauren? Know what I would. What would I choose? Um, Taylor Swift. Okay. Because yeah. I want to see that show, so <laughs> I'll book it. There we yeah, go. That, yeah. I've seen many show of yeah, the shows, yes, many. but I can't go again. Sure. <laughs> I'd, I'd go to that one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Um. And then speaking of um. Uh, idols or heroes um you had the chance to um record a single with with robert smith so i i was just wondering like what's it like to be around robert smith that's like something really uh, awesome yeah i mean i was still kind of baffled that that's a thing that happened but he's been so incredibly generous and kind to us um and we did uh, get to have a sort of pub hang um after we played the show he came out at one of our shows and We got to have some beers and stuff afterwards. Yeah. Too many beers, I yeah. would say. He has a very calm and calming energy to be around, you know. As you might imagine from his persona, you know, he's quite laid back and really quietly spoken and lovely, lovely man. Lovely man. Very funny too. Yeah, and but like, he's quiet until he's had a few pints and then he really comes alive. Okay. And <laughs> all the stories start coming out and he's a very funny man. Wow. And really, really, just a really warm person to be around. Okay. It's, and it's interesting because he has the reputation because of the cure, yeah. being very serious. And mm-hmm. I don't find him to be a overly <laughs> serious guy at all. I think he's a really light and warm, fun person to be around. Very passionate about music, clearly. Yeah. Um, and he's also uh, much better at drinking than me. We've okay. had two nights out, and both times I've had to go to bed before Robert. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, he, yeah, he's a, an incredible person. See, it feels even weird to talk about it. Yeah, that's sick. And how was it to work with him? Uh, was it was it? How was the process of working with Robert? It was all. It was all. Uh, it was all done remotely. Mm-hmm. We never actually spoke. Okay. The entire time. Mm-hmm. We did, we emailed a bunch, like, ideas or, Robert was very exact about his process and what he was going to do and where it would come in. Yeah. He very, very accurate. Um, that was great for us. And then he got involved with the mix process as well. He had some great notes on the mix that we were doing. And, um... He stayed really engaged till the very end, but we did it all without ever actually speaking to the guy. It was, okay. which is unusual for us. Yeah. The first time we ever spoke was, the f- it, a, a, about a day before the first piece of promo we ever did together. Okay. Which is <laughs> bizarre because we've been communicating for months at that point. Yeah. Actually, um, I don't know if I'm wrong, but that w- that was kind of the way you um, you created your last record, uh, Scream Violence, right? Like remotely um how was you know dealing with uh pandemic i mean two years back from where we are now it was very different it was like lockdown we couldn't see each other how it was to like go through that uh process and kind of turn it into a record i mean it was very very weird a very unusual way to make a record but um and we had a little bit of time together right at the start of the of the year so like february february march 2020 and then we all went home to our separate places and right at the end for the finishing of the record and the mixing we could be in the same place okay but yeah quite surreal and strange but i don't know i think it added something to the energy of the album that it wouldn't have otherwise it's like a little time capsule of that mm. experience i guess yeah yeah and i think it it, it is like a time capsule because uh screen violence is like one of the main themes and and what happened this last two years mm-hmm. like information everywhere a lot of news and uh people saying stuff and fake news and how how would you guys um recommend the audience to cope with screen violence with so much I going on <laughs> oh man i really don't know i yeah. think my my scream time during the height of the pandemic was absolutely horrendous so okay. i don't have any good advice <laughs> i'm just as bad as everybody else yeah Yeah. I, mean, I think it's just yeah. very new. It's it's still very new. 
yeah. the idea of us interfacing with the screen as much as we do. It's the type of thing that will, as technology moves forward, will probably become different. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have the answer to that it's one like, either. I have a screen right now in front of me. It's, it's <laughs> the fundamental <laughs> part now. of Look what we do them. now. Like, it's just like, they're everywhere because we need them for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, uh, let me ask you this uh, from a question from the audience. It says, please ask them the meaning of the song Graffiti. Every time I listen to it, it gets a huge melancholy and I end up crying. Oh, oh no. It's quite a happy sounding song. Lyrics are not it's very happy though, they're very... I guess, yeah. I think when we were writing it, we liked the idea of that kind of John Hughes movie kind of vibe and like I guess there is something melancholic about nostalgia mm -hmm. so sorry to that person unless it's like a happy cry that you like then please carry on <laughs> it, it might be a, uh, a happy cry yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it's quite a nostalgic song when yeah. you listen to it it's yeah. like a song about unfulfilled potential mm. like looking back on your life and being like and, and reflecting in a sad way mm. yeah I think that everyone can identify with that, or a lot of people can. Yeah, um, um, like being on tour, uh, recording music, being being a band. Sometimes we don't see like the hard times for you guys, um, but like we're all human beings at the end of the day. How do you guys like cope with mental health and and staying like with a good like? Um... Well, <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, no, I guess. Um... Yeah, tour, tour is always very inconsistent and like the only routine is that there is no real routine to it, so mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, we've gotten better at it, maybe, kind of. Yeah, I mean, medicate, <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk to people. Natural medicine, like not natural medicine. You know, so, sometimes Food. there's, all, there's all, <laughs> all kinds of medicine, mm -hmm. some are, uh, you know. Some are, some are different than others. True, true, true. I just noticed there's little naked... Why are those ladies naked on your mural there? Yeah, it's, it's, why are they doing it's a multiverse right there. Interesting. <laughs> it's like we're on some place right there in some mm -hmm. <laughs> some other universe. <laughs> but yeah, on the way in. There's also Patrick right there taking a there's picture. A, there's a couple oh. of naked guys falling out of buildings at the top there. Just for equality's just sake. Just for equality. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like jumping out of a building or something. What are those cats doing on the roof? That's not safe. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice deflection, Lauren. Yes. <laughs> Do you have like a um, a memory with a fan in Mexico on, on this uh, particular uh, trip? Or in any trip you had that you remember that, uh, gave to you a present or anything? I mean, people are always so kind to us. They bring lots of presents and like signs at shows and things like that. Um, somebody at the show the other day made a like green velvet cape that had some lyrics on the back, which I thought was really great. But then I got too excited picking it up when I missed the start of the song. You, so, you made it just in time. It was a bit rough, but that was my fault because I wasn't concentrating. I was overexcited about the cape. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually, your outfit was pretty cool on, on Friday. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and it's helpful because sequins you can wet wipe the blood, uh, the fake blood off afterwards, so it's easier. <laughs> okay. Um, around these times, uh, do you take time to to work on new music? Or not yet? Mm, no. Historically, I have done, but no, not anymore. No, okay. it's just tour. Right? Yes, okay. tour mode, tour time. Okay. Where Where are you going? On uh, what's next on this tour? Um, we have a show in Monterey and then uh, Corona Capital in Guadalajara, Guadalajara. and then mm -hmm. uh, US touring and then we've got a couple of European festivals in July I think and then yeah just back to it okay okay very good very good so um, let's let's listen to a, a track uh, a kind of an old song a, an oldie but a goodie <laughs> one of my favorite from churches it's lies oh, and wow. and your uh, están con churches aquí en la bestia radio. Nueve años, nine years, ten years actually, diez años de que estaban haciendo esta, esta rola, ten years from, from creating uh, this track, and we almost have to say goodbye, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> thanks for being here, um, uh, thanks for playing 
again in in this in this city and what i mean this might be like an, a really open question but what has changed since creating that song lies and, and what was that first lp to 10 years later uh, almost everything in my life has changed okay almost everything <laughs> which is crazy to think about got a little bit more gray hair than I yeah. used to. I'm getting a bit of grey. <laughs> oh, no, I'm getting a bit of grey in my beard so down the bottom. Wisdom. Cool. Wisdom. Wisdom, yeah. yeah. Maybe. That's maybe. a good answer. That's my, yeah. <laughs> my hope. Yeah. Um, but, no, thank you for having us, man. We're really, really grateful. Thank you for listening to the tunes. Yeah, no, thank, thank you guys for the music. And, well, that's it. Eso fue todo aquí en Diversirama. Thank you, churches, once again. Have a great tour. Have a great show in Monterrey, Guadalajara, and wherever you go. Thanks, Thanks again for the music. And eso fue todo. Nos vemos el próximo lunes. Bye. Bye. Bye.